These five quintuplet sisters look happy, but unfortunately their smiles hide a horrible secret. From the moment they were born, the Dion sisters were very well known. On May 28, 1934, Canadian Elsir Dion gave birth to five babies who she named Emile, Yvonne, Cecile, Annette and Marie. They were big news as they were the first quintuplets in the world to survive infancy. Soon they became the most famous children in Canada. Dr. Alan Defoe was the person responsible for making sure the births went well. With the help of neighbors who brought blankets to keep the babies warm, the five were able to survive. But sadly, the Dion family was happy for only a short time. The news of the miracle babies traveled lightning fast. People from across the country wanted to see them with their own eyes. And soon, businessmen realized that the quince could be a gold mine. The first to make an offer to the Dion's were representatives from the World's Fair in Chicago who wanted to show the quince off. The Canadian government found this out and decided to intervene, and this is where things got ugly. With the excuse of preventing their parents from taking advantage of them, the Dion's lost custody. The quince were given to the Red Cross who built a hospital complex in front of their house where the children would be taken care of. Though it seemed their intentions were good, it soon became clear they were not. The Premier of Ontario declared that the quintuplets would have to stay as wards of the state until they turned 18 years old. Again, the official reason was to avoid their parents exploiting them. But the truth was that the government itself wanted to exploit them. They turned the hospital complex into an amusement park called Quintland, where they hoped to make money off the quintuplets. Tourists from all over visited Quintland to see the quints through a one-way mirror without them knowing who was looking at them. The visitors saw the girls play, study, and eat with their carers as if they were watching animals in the zoo. For nine years, the quints stayed inside the complex without any friends and without knowing what was outside or what the real world was like. The manager of the complex was Dr. Defoe, who had brought them into the world. He was named legal guardian of the quintuplets. Their parents still lived in the small house where the quints were born, right in front of Quintland, but could rarely visit their kids. Completely unaware, the quints generated more than 500 million Canadian dollars in tourism between 1934 and 1943, becoming the most visited attraction in the area, even more than Niagara Falls. They also sold souvenirs with the kids' faces, like this handkerchief, and put them in advertisements with Dr. Defoe, who himself became famous as the doctor responsible for their health. The quints were stars in Canada and the United States, so much so that Hollywood actors like Clark Gable and Betty Davis, and even the British royal family, went to visit them. But every story has an ending. In 1943, after being pressured by the parents, Dr. Defoe gave up his guardianship of the quince. The government let them go home, but only because their popularity had faded over time. This inhuman experiment had lasted for nine years. The sisters moved with their parents to a 20-room mansion. The luxurious new home was paid for with a fund that the government had set aside for when the quints became adults, but sadly their lives there didn't improve but only got worse. Their parents bought fancy cars and expensive food, taking money from their daughter's fund without them knowing. They also made them work extra hard, doing all the house chores. This nightmare lasted until 1952 when they turned 18. The five of them left their parents' house and barely had any contact with them from then on. Marie, Annette, and Cecile soon got married and had children. Emile went to a convent, but she passed away when she was 20 from an epilepsy episode. Sadly, Marie passed in 1970. 
at the age of 35. The other three sisters, Yvonne, Annette, and Cecile, lived together during the 90s. In 1998, they sued the Canadian government, eventually settling to get $2.8 million in compensation. That was the price decided to be enough to pay for all years of exploitation and the lost childhood of five innocent girls. Sadly, this story does not have a happy ending. In 2001, Yvonne passed away. And in 2006, Cecile's own son tricked her and stole all of her money. Now she lives in a retirement home for the disadvantaged, subsidized by the government. But she does still have Annette, the other surviving sister, who goes to visit her often. The love between sisters is the one positive thing that they still have in their lives. The exploitation of the quints by the government and even their own parents who used them for money left a psychological mark that continues to torment them. This story should serve as an example of the horrible consequences of denying children their childhood because of money. Even today, there are many child stars who become famous in movies or ads when they are still in school. So the question remains, is it possible that this might happen again? Let us know in the comments. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and follow us on social media. And don't go just yet, we have many more videos you might like.